Now, lots more work on the underwing support. As you can see, the ribs are assembled in two halves, but this is only on the underwing support, all right? Um, I'm building the airframe here, which the uh, bracing pieces on it give it a lot of strength. Now, what I've done is added an extra piece onto the leading edge because it landed up flush with the edge of the ribs. Um, and I want a nice curve on there, <clears throat> so I've added, added an extra piece on. All right, and like I said, the bracing pieces are good. You can see there where I've printed off part of the plan, cut it out and stuck it on the wood. All right, I'll, I'll probably remove some of it when it's done, but only when it's done. Now, one of the ribs, this is all to um, help with the all up weight, the flying weight is built out of 316 square all right and you can see there um you build one half of the rib and then you build forward and aft all right forward and aft all right on the ribs and the center section is cut out of the others for the all up weight very good build um trying to i'm uh, reading the drawing yeah it all becomes clear once you start building i mean some of the drawing i couldn't make out all right uh but once you start building it starts to come clear so i'm quite pleased with the way this is gone uh lots of strength in it i, I mean <laughs> once it's all done i've got to fit this to that which may be a different matter because things move with any prefabricated sub-assembly it moves and there was a lot of movement on the fuselage all right um which i've had to stick in extra bracing pieces the after the fuselage was um pretty much plain sailing compared to forward at the front all right not that easy at the front of the fuselage um lots of movement lots of things had to be changed but uh with this um hopefully this will fit straight into that yeah um enjoying the build though and i'm very pleased with it i've put these pieces in they've got to be cut off um it's to do with the structure and i cut them back a bit too much i mean we all make mistakes and and in all of it is how well you put those mistakes right in a way um I'm, i wasn't going to cut another two pieces to go on here no it, it's um it would just cost too much money i went to um local diy do it yourself um a while ago if you're in the uk this was b and q all right, and I picked myself up. I've been looking at one for quite a long time. I picked up a uh, a gas soldering iron. Yeah, uh, it's a gas uh, blow torch. I kept calling it a blow lamp, but it's a very old word that. I mean, my dad had one, and it was the old Primus one, and you had to do this, pump this sort of thing on it and then it would uh, burn like uh, unbelievable burning force on it but i kept calling it a blow lamp and all these um younger staff they had even the woman my age didn't know what i was talking about so i we didn't change that the blow torch and i found it but buying a blow torch is a little bit overkill because i, I want them i bought the steel wire because i want to make another one of these um uh in america you call it custom in the uk we call it scratch built so custom scratch built um under uh rc undercarriage all right i bought myself a fly sky six channel radio control so the channels are there to do this all right and um it quite interested me i saw on uh, one youtube video where a guy called uh, i can't remember his name now he makes custom retracts all right and he makes a very good job of it all right so i thought i'd have a go myself so there's custom retracts on the envoy <clears throat> i could actually if i was building the envoy again do them a lot better but mm, that's the way it goes and um, the next model that i'm converting um i've got uh hopefully it will come better all right because trying to understand um that straight off and you've never done it before is not the easiest thing in the world but once you do it once you then and you come away from it for a little bit you start to get ideas and you start to notice how it's done and the 
great thing about YouTube is you can take the video back and back again and back again. All right, so let me just show you this little gas blowtorch that I bought. Here it is. And it's made by some people called Go System. All right, um, it probably come around there. Is, let's have a look. I, yeah, let's have a look. Can you see that? Hang on. Can you see that? Okay. It's a bit in the light. Go system. All right. Um, what you do is you switch, you light your, this is lighter for the gas. There we go. And there it is. Look. All right. Okay. Wonderful. And it's got a little thing to vary the flame. All right. Okay. And then I'll turn it off. Um, it fills up with um, lighter gas or um, the uh, camping gas, like cartridge things. All right, you can fill it up with that. Uh, that's at your uh, at your own risk. All right, don't don't quote me on that. Please don't come back to me. So fill it up. Uh, then go right. That's only rec. That's only me suggested. All right. Okay. So um, you find out the right one to fill it up with and you do it all right but here's the um here's the soldering iron that comes with it or right? i won't strip it down and put it back together i had to actually what nowadays they don't give you the full instructions do they join they don't give you the full instructions and you've actually got to go online to um to find them but i found it and it sits it sits on there it screws on it's got like a you know, like a screw thread, and then you take that out and change it around. And then the um, the gas comes out the sides, and then it heats it all up, all right? But nonetheless, I mean, what I wanted this for was not necessarily soldering. It was for, um, it's for bending wire, all right? Yeah, uh, bending wire, because with this, it means I can heat the wire up, all right, past cherry red to yellow. And I can build very, very small angles, all right, on small bits of wire. And um, this will enable me to do it, all right. So, yeah, it's cool, all right. I like it. I haven't used it yet, all right. I'll let you all know what it's like when I've used it, all right. Um, I don't have... Um, the uh jigs here which you do i mean i used to be an aircraft fitter um i started at rolls royce when i was 16 years old i was only just 16 i left school at 15. <coughs> um <coughs> my birthday was in the holidays so i was out at 15. and i started at rolls royce um 16 a couple of weeks old all right and um I did the full old-fashioned apprenticeship until I was 20. And at Rolls-Royce, I then stayed there for a further two years. So at Rolls-Royce, I worked on um, aero engines. I worked on Pegasus for Harrier Jump Jets, Olympus Industrials, and um, RB199 for Tornadoes. Okay, so, so more than likely, some of those GR1s that were in Gulf War One. I would have worked on the engine parts okay i then left um i did a few things and then i returned to aircraft plastics where i worked on tornado drop tanks um which are the large composite fuel tanks that sit under the wing so i, I did a bit with aircraft plastics uh, but i was uh, had an inspection job in that factory um, where I would test the tanks, uh, I would test drop aircraft drop tanks. Okay, um, what happens is they um, they give the uh, aircraft a longer range, and then when the fuel spent, they jettison them. All right, simple as that. From there, I went to British Aerospace, where I worked on A320 wings leading edge. I did that for a year, and then I. What happened then? I was transferred onto VC tens, okay. Uh, Vickers VC tens, uh, VC ten, very interesting aircraft. They were built for um, high, hot air, high altitude, uh, short runways, okay. I would say it was built when Britain still owned Hong Kong. The Vickers VC ten was built for the Hong Kong run, all right. So it was. Um, great big wingspan and it could take off very easily from a short runway 
in a high altitude with hot air, all right. Um, great aircraft. I mean, um, they came in from British Airways when I worked there. And I worked on all sorts of things. I did survey. I worked in wing tanks. I was a tank rat for a while. And then I, my last section I was on there was mains uh, undercarriage hydraulics, all right. And sadly, as I was doing that, the call board ended and the wall came down and, um, oh, uh, Western governments, us and the Americans and everybody else started offloading government contracts. Um, things were changing. I mean, I read one thing as the whole of Southern California aircraft workers you go to places it'd be just deserted houses with milk bottles left washed out on the doorstep the people gone because the work had ended well that that happened to me here in the uk all right um but i i i now i i mean i'm, I'm making model aircraft um i i i tend to make the model aircraft a bit like you'd make a real aircraft all right i am a model maker i made uh, models before i uh, was an apprentice um and then had a, quite a long gap where I didn't make them from about 13 to about late 20s because I was doing army reserve and all that sort of thing, uh, social life, etc. Um, and I returned about 28. But nowadays I build models and I do an aircraft documentary every day. Um, I've done the F-18E today, Super Hornet. All right. Um, I was looking at the uh, Blue Angels. Um, I did the Battle of Britain Memorial flight uh, a few days ago, and now I'm doing the Blue Angels. All right, so they have the um, they had uh, the uh, McDonnell Douglas uh, Hornet, I think, for years, and then McDonnell Douglas merged with Boeing, and they've now got this Super Hornet. All right, um, U.S. Navy aviation is quite something. All right, I've always been impressed by it. Um, uh very impressive they've been at um naval aviation as long as we have been in the uk um and uh the u.s navy is is very impressive organization all right uh the equipment they have the standard of discipline and also yeah it's it's a very impressive organization so big up to the u.s navy um in uh, like i said i'm going to switch over in a minute and show you what work i'm doing today all right so very shortly uh, all right we will switch and i'll take you over to the workbench and show you the um wing assembly which is the center section and the two wings port and starboard with the uh, with the envoy you build uh the this huge center section which which is very similar to a vc10 you've got this huge center section more than likely it would have had a fuel tank in it and then smaller wings i mean when i was um a tank rat i used to go uh, through a hatch in the uh, upper side of the wing and then crawl all through the ribs um to uh grind off corrosion and then, then paint lacquer on um, I used to wear an air mask and take a light in and all sorts. Yeah, um, some people can't do it because of claustrophobia. But for me, it, it was something that really um, I found that I was okay with. And then I did that for months, to be honest with you. Would I do that job again? Yeah, because you're sort of left to your own devices and you can uh, very much potter around getting on with your work. And uh, it's it, for me, it was it was a good job. Um, so, like I said, um, I'll take you over to now where I'm working on the wing today. Okay, we're over at the um, uh, workbench, workboard. <clears throat> now, um, here's the centre section. I've got a lot of clamps on it today because I'm... Um, Working on the fairing, I put the first piece on, which lines up with a fuselage, and then got the second piece in, in then, and it'll be sanded to a curve each side. Um, slight breakage this morning on the main spar there. Um, that will happen. Uh, lots of stresses pulling on it. And as I said in previous videos, you're only as good as your mistakes, all right? But um, here's the cosmetic strip that I've added. 
all right it goes along there and then what i'm going to do is sand it uh to suit all right a lot of sanding to suit on here I, I seem to use that word a lot but it's good and that's on both wings both port and starboard now if you're ever uh confused about port and starboard always remember the ship left port so port is left all right starboard is right all right i'll say it again the ship left port all right um so port is your left hand side but um it's quite a fantastic um uh wing assembly there it's huge i mean you stand it up um it's 54 inches in length and it's quite something and inside i've got the retracts you can you can see the uh servo for um for the retracts there it needs a little bit of cleaning up but what i've done in america you call it popsicles uh, we call it lollies all right so what i've done is you're supposed to use um aluminium sheet um oh tags to screw it on but what i've done is use these uh, <coughs> ice lolly popsicle sticks and um, they pick up on the front of the fuse on forward and then aft um you've got two there and then i've got nylon nuts and bolts and then it, it it um goes in like a sort of um you know it fits be uh, a post fits between the two sticks and then you bring the back up and then it, it uh, sits there with a uh, tension on it which um, keeps it all nice and firm and in place all right so i had to line those up um which uh did, you know is a bit of careful uh bit of careful work or making sure it lined up but it went well and um I'm quite happy with it. All right. So I've I've used balsa glue. I mean, what I normally do is use super glued attack and then use a PVA solution, which is <clears throat> PVA mixed with warm water because it soaks into the wood and gets right into the joints. But this is drying with balsa glue because I wanted something a lot um, harder. I uh, Super glue is all right for tacking. Never build your model entirely with super glue. It's all right to hold something in place, but it's brittle. All right, it doesn't move. Um, balsa glue um, is also brittle, but it's got a little bit of movement. And PVA um, glue has got a very good elasticity to it. So this is going to be coated in PVA as well. All right, um, because when I get it flying, I'm still building the... Um, oh uh, around the pole electric pylon it's in the other room um i'll do a video on that because it has come on i use two motorbike wheel bearings for it um i'll go through that when i do the video but um i just wanted you all to see the um the wing with attached to the center section what i've done is um they're attached with uh nylon bolts nylon nuts and bolts all right i had a uh not the easiest job in the world fitting a one wing one wing went as sweet as a nut but the other oh it was real fiddly sort of fingers and thumbs i landed up dropping the nylon nuts and bolts on the carpet many of you will notice um, especially if you build plastic kits you'll drop a part on the carpet you'll never find it again all right so but i did find them but it was some days later because when they fall about three foot um a meter out there to people who are into metric when they fall three foot down they bounce and when you're in the middle of something you never find them again you you just don't it's a, and then a few days later you find them yeah so um i found all the ones i lost yeah which was good all right so um coming along there all right all right work in progress it's coming along let me see if i can get back show the uh the uh immensity and the size of this yeah it's uh the biggest build i've ever done all right um it's that's actually longer than the three foot um raf uh, launch that i built from ply out in the back room i'll do a video on that one one day that took me a lot of time because i started it in the 80s and then 90s i was work after i got made redundant i was working on shifts and um 
trying to find time to do it. I returned to it in the early noughties, yeah, and then finished it off. Um, so it's out in the back room. I also built a uh, cabin cruiser, three foot one, called Magpie, but I gave that away to... Um, Oh, someone I know, one of her kids, a little boy, and he, he he gave me a thank you card for it. And she said, his mother said she had never seen him look so pleased with himself. It's really made me happy that I've made something which uh, somebody got a lot of pleasure out of. All right. So, um, OK, let's uh, crack straight into the uh, talk about the uh, model here. This uh, was an internet download plan from a uh, website called Outer Zone Plans. Very good and recommended if you would like to build a balsa wood a model free flight, um, rubber, pa uh, rubber powered, IC, electric, round the pole, etc. Now, um, as you can see from these pictures, the Envoy is built in a series of sub-assemblies. So, I've come on today to um, just let you all know um, where I've got. It's taken a while because I fitted in custom retracts, which is uh, what we call in the UK a, sc a, re a scratch-built retractable undercarriage. You can see the size of this plane. It's got a 54-inch wingspan. It's a big model, very enjoyable build. Um, the plan was originally uh, drawn up in 1939 by a guy called Mr. John Towner, who did several other designs, very good designer and builder and flyer. Um, so like I said, um, what I've done is built a series of sub-assemblies. I built the fuselage first, then the center section, then the wings, then the tailplane. Um, what I've done literally is strengthened everything because I'm going to fly this as either RC or round the pole. I'm not the world's best RC flyer. So what I'm going to do is more than likely round the pole. But this has been a very, very enjoyable build. It's probably the biggest um, build I've ever built for a uh, model plane. You can see the retracts that I fitted in there. Um, not the easiest job in the world, but I, it took me two weeks to get downward motion. All right, and there's the center section with the wings bolted on. Now, on the drawing, it says to use things like aluminium tags, this, that, and the other. But nowadays, obviously, I've put some modern things in it. Um, nowadays, I use uh, nylon nuts and bolts, which I buy online. <laughs> I've got the canopy to make yet. Yeah, I'm going to have a go. It'll be my first time at making a canopy from the plastic bottle with the heat gun, you know, with the videos on YouTube, all right? And as you can see here, I've used ice lolly sticks, what you call popsicle in America, to secure, um, to give a bit of, sp they can act as a spring if you set them right. And then you can see there, there's the nylon nuts, all right? <clears throat> and the nylon bolts go down through the um, sub, sub assembly, to um, hold it all in place <clears throat> and then the um, lolly sticks um, like I said if you set them right slightly up a bit it gives a bit of spring and it holds it nice and tight especially with the center section all right because you're putting quite a large section onto the fuselage um, so what I did is uh, made a positioning type of pin with the the lolly sticks at the front and then a um, couple of lolly sticks at the rear um, slightly offset on an angle so it gives a bit of a spring when you then screw in your plastic nuts uh, plastic bolts into the nuts all right there it is on the workbench all right um, like I said I, I've obviously um, changed the build um, because I've got a uh, on the tailplane I've got a movable rudder and stabilizer uh, mo uh, movable stabilizer and uh, rudder all right um, and there's it on my is that's not my workbench my workbench is in the back room but that's the um, oh that's a model board my dad made me in 1976 which I've still got and many planes have been built on it uh, he made that for me from two pieces of cardboard which he stuck together with masking tape and it's perfect for pins. So that's uh, that's actually in my living room. Now, what you're looking at here 
is um, the great thing about these downloadable plans is that you only have to print the work the part you're working on um, that last shot um, it looks dirty but what that is is actually candle wax so what I did is melt it a bit wait for it to cool a little bit and then rubbed it all over the plan because I've got to make that's for the nacelles I've got to make two of them all right so I don't want to have to print off another plan paper ink costs you know how much ink, uh, printer ink cartridge is it's a lot of money and you've got to buy the reams of paper the reams of paper aren't too bad but the ink costs a lot of money so in all of it I don't want to have to get printing that again so I've covered it in wax um, as I do with anything I'm building onto the plan so it can be easily removed all right we're having a look at this center section again with these custom retracts um, if I if I built this model again I would do them a lot better I'm working on another model at the moment far smaller um, building custom retracts and what I've noticed I mean this is only my opinion if you do it and it doesn't work it's at your own risk that if you want um, backwards motion your wheels um, folding up towards the uh, trailing edge of the plane um, you've got to have the axle inside it at the rear all right and if you want them folding forward you've got to have the axle um, up by the the uh, just back from the leading edge all right okay um, but in all of it, yeah, I, I got to say it, <coughs> excuse me, a really enjoyable build. Yeah, um, I photographed it in and out um, as well as, I mean, I do an aircraft documentary every day. I've done a science fiction one today, but I take pictures of this in and out. Um, I, not so much now because what happens is you learn hundreds of pictures. You don't do a lot with them all. It's... Um, difficult trying to get through them all deciding which is the best now that block on the ceiling i put that up with some of that um mastic type glue and um that would be to hang a lamp on later on but it i uh, it's other use what i put it up for is to um <coughs> hang this model from the ceiling because obviously um you're coming in on the dark yeah it's left in the living room and you don't want to hear a nasty crunch in the dark when you've come in with a ton of shopping and that's your model playing um trashed all right by your own misfortune um so it's hung up out the way all right um with some um what looks like paracord that i got or camping guy rope stuff that i got from uh local builders merchants yeah so you like you said there you are you see look, bits of the plan printed off um you don't have you can print the implant tire plan and pin it to your wall if you want but i find it easier it you just to print a bit off all right the bit that you're working on and um that's really cool but like like, like i said you i mean you can really feel the i mean that's a six foot long bed there um with the wings nearly stretching the um the the whole of the bed there's the um the cells i haven't done them yet they're ready to go i've cut the um the bases for the uh cowls out of ply all right um some of this where i've had to strengthen it um make it out of bigger wood i mean at the end of the day the original ribs on this plane were made out of 30 second sheet i've built a uh, waco hadrian glider in 1977 from the old map plans handbook uh, which was 32 sheet balsa ribs my goodness uh that was a hard job so I, I i never really want to do that again so this one is all being upgraded all right okay i've got windows to do yet as well but what i've done is bought some plastic sheet and some clear plastic sheet and i'm going to um cut the windows and add the window panes um separately i'm not going to cut it I, it will be cut into the airframe but only when i've got the plastic sheet on and then it will be made the the, the um, outstanding edge the flush will be taken up with balsa filler balsa filler funny old stuff it's white it looks like marshmallow um and it acts strange if you put it on without a little dab of water what i found is best to put a dab of water my biggest fear is that i fly this successfully and it comes down with a bump and all the filler fold falls out um, i hope it doesn't anyway like i said um there you can see the, the tailplane sub assembly it's it's good i i can't say it um 
building in these sub assemblies is like making a uh, different model for each part of the aircraft yeah um, like I said it's on the workbench there uh, being able with clamps and things this this was the fitting of the um, the fasteners for the tailplane obviously hanging from the ceiling again it hasn't got any wheels on it at the moment um, I've, I, I tend to use oversized slightly oversized wheels with model planes um, the uh, original especially if, if I'm going to um, convert it or upgrade it um, if it comes down with a bump it needs that extra little bit of cushioning yeah um, but, but what I found as well is is I'll pick it up and then um, stringers will break off the airframe so I've got to go back um, and uh, replace the stringers all right um, the livery for this one is going to be from the Republican which are the communist side of the Spanish Civil War they've got a great camouflage the Republicans from that era um, as opposed to the side of Franco who had a very sort of boring corporate um, powder blue color um, uh, the uh, the old Republicans um, they got the sort of Spanish flag going on on the tail with a great camouflage real um, sort of uh, 1930s stuff it looks great like I said you can see the two bases for the cowls there <clears throat> all right um, they're both made out of ply and I've printed off and cut out the parts that I'm working on all right so that's the update at the moment the uh, center section is nearly done the fuselage nearly done tailplane done um, the uh, wings are done all right and the custom retracts are in and fitted um, they're also bushed and all I've got to do is now is fit the wheels on but I'm waiting to paint before I do that I've done a vlog for a while but I'm back it's Sunday today so I've done quite a lot and I don't use power tools on a Sunday as I said before so it's all been small little uh, today but working on the nacelle so the second side always ne never always takes a lot but the first side is because i'm building this from a plan and plans from 1939 there's no real instructions there is an information sheet what um, out of zone plans call a supplement i'm trying to bring it into view behind me you can't see much at the moment hopefully i'm going to put up some um, photographs on this uh, on this footage so you can have a look at uh, some of the development what I've done. But what I'm doing is building out our harbored strips and then filling with balsa. Okay, I'm re rejoining you now. I've been busy for the last couple of days. Things very, very busy. But I've uh, been getting on with things. I hope you all like the uh, the new video that's gone up on the Mosquito. Built of ply and balsa. Interesting aircraft. So I've been getting on with the nacelles. All right, I'm chatting to people on, online and friends. And I've described this center section as the beating heart of the aircraft. Because it, it really is. I mean, this is where it takes. This is where your propulsion is held. It's where the undercarriage is. So lots of great work and I'm building the second nacelles now once you've done one it's far easier to do the other because like I said with this 1939 plan everything's first run everything's say uh, first off yeah so you've got really um, some things work some things don't work uh, but generally um, this has gone right thank goodness and um, I'm now getting on with the other side I just flip the camera around so you can have a look so here's the um, the other side and it's coming along and what's happening here is i've um, i hope you can see it under this light okay so what happens here is the, the the large clamps on there that that clamp i bought at the ipms show at telford i bought two of them and they're very very good that clamp's holding the uh, motor mount to the trailing edge and it's to keep it um upright on a on a 45 degree angle to the leading edge of the wing it's already been put at a 45 degree angle also to the leading edge is is a funny old game this with this one um, but what I'm doing is getting it literally to stand up straight so we can fit the um, spars on for the other uh, sorry the stringers on for the nacelles now here's the other side which is now uh, nearly done yeah let's see if I can uh, focus on that there you go all right so he's nearly done he's looking good with its spruce and balsa all right and gives it a little bit multicolor 
um, looks good on video, on photographs, etc. Sorry about this. I'm just trying. There we go. All right. Um, we're under incandescent light here, so uh, and the daylight's fading, so it's not going to be um, that great. But I, I just wanted you all to see it. All right. So there we go. All right. So like I said, video rig for the webcam set up now in the living room, so I can record myself while I'm working and do a time lapse video. That won't be on this model. That'll be on a, the model after. So I, like I said, I do like the Albatross from World War One, the Imperial. German uh, Air Force, I think they were called, um, plane, which is uh, which was originally flown by Baron von Richthofen before he went to the DR-1 Fokker triplane, all right? So, uh, yeah, um, we're going to uh, have a look at an Albatross. I, there are a couple of plans on Outer Zone plans, great site. So if you're into building um, Balsa RC free flight, um, what do you call it, internal combustion, whatever um you know electric uh go on to outer zone plans all right there are free download uh, there's a way of uh, i ought to do a video on it one day there's a way of downloading them and then um, saving them and then tile printing them you've got to know the way of doing it, it took me years to work it out but once i worked it out um then this appears the envoy airspeed envoy all right so i'm just going to cut the camera now um, I'm not going to do that walk down the passageway, which I usually do. And then I'll show you the um, video rig I've made up. So there we go. Okay, I've come down and there's the video rig. Not the easiest job in the world because, like again, it's getting it at a right angle to the wall, getting it at a right angle to the ceiling. Um, but I, um, it's come on. All right. Okay, so it's there hanging by a piece of wire that I got from Antics and the video cameras on it i've ordered an ex uh, usb uh, lead extension from out the nacelles now a lot of work very enjoyable though it's really good this i'm going to flip the camera around in a minute or maybe you can see it from behind me i don't know i'll turn the camera oh there you go so the nacelles are now done for anybody who doesn't know what nacelles are it's cowlings that cover the engines on a plane and twin engine planes obviously you've got two of them and i'm really pleased by the way that they've come out lots of work at the moment on aircraft documentaries so thanks for all the likes thanks for all the subscriptions i've um, gone over 1k now which is amazing and the strength of my channel is because of all of you out there subscribing and i really do thank you very much back to the nacelles i'm going to flip the camera around now and you can have a look looking at the nacelles i'm very pleased with the way this has gone the wheels are tucked nicely up inside and as i said before this is the beating heart of the aircraft the propulsion is here the retractable undercarriage is here probably I'll keep the battery here and all sorts of radio gear as well and servos but I am very pleased about how they've come out I've never built a twin engine aircraft before with nicety that I've had in building it in the enjoyment I'll probably build another twin engine plane there's plenty of plans on the outer zone plans website and it's really it's been absolutely enjoyable building this and I really do like the body lines these pre-war body line design concepts are absolutely second to none so lots of dark and light wood there i think it's some spruce strips that i used with balsa to give this light and dark effect but i didn't fill it all with wood i left lots of gaps to fill with balsa filler balsa filler is great it's almost like powder and you add a tiny bit of water to it and you can spread it out and this that and the other and it fills the gaps and this is good because you're fighting against white with any model is um, not easy and uh, you've got to keep the weight down so a fair bit of filler in here but that plugs the gaps i'm hoping to cover the model in fabric i've bought some fabric but i'm not overly sure it's the right stuff whether i'll put fabric on the center section i don't know i may just paint it and then every everything with this because it's an internet download is a first run but very pleased on the way it's come out if you can let's have a look you can see around it it needs a little bit more block balsa on it but i need to put the center section onto the fuselage to have a look where it needs more block balsa it's probably around the trailing edge where it meets 
the fuselage but generally it's coming along very much pleased with this i take about a month six weeks to build these and make sure that they're right it's slightly different obviously from the 1939 plan i've done modern tweaks and added a bit because i'm going to fly it with portion it's originally rubber powered so i've added the underneath of the nacelles as well where it doesn't have that on the original drawing i just looked it there's plenty of pictures online of airspeed envoys so i took it from that and hopefully you can see it's always for it's not dark in this back room but it sometimes it doesn't sort of video or photograph that well in the light and i've really got to move myself around so you can see the wheels tucking in on those shapes and see if i can get round to show you that's a bit better all right so you can see it there so i've done the underside of the nacelles which isn't on the drawing however this will fly with electric propulsion i can add that bit of weight to it very enjoyable work this and i've actually crossed the boundary of building twin engine model aircraft which i've never done before i've built all single engine and i'll check in with you all on the next video 